All right. Says it's still thinking. There we go. All so right. Live. That's real. Live. More technical difficulties. Facebook must be making adjustments. Sorry about that, everybody. I had to download a new version of Chrome. Safari would not work. So we tried Chrome. And then Chrome wouldn't work, which is what we usually use. So we had to download another version. So we got a couple people here with us now. Thanks for being here. Sorry we're late. We're just talking about our technical difficulties tonight, getting all this set up for Discover the Bible. But uh, we'll give a few minutes Hi, for Jane. people to come along tonight. Hey, Jane. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Nice, windy, nasty <laughs> well, day. Quite a day for mothers, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Did anybody do anything exciting today? It's kind of tough with the, uh, what do we call it now, safe. Stay Ohio, safe, Ohio. Ohio, Ohio stay safe yeah. policies. Yeah, we pretty much just bummed around the house. Played a game of uh, Pegs and Jokers. Pegs and Jokers. With our kids. Anybody out there ever played Pegs and Jokers? Yeah. Trent and I won. We, we did, defeated, barely. We defeated a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old. And it was close. It came down to the yeah, last peg. We were pretty vicious. and Pretty close. <laughs> mm. So... Uh, well, tonight we're looking at Matthew chapter or Mark chapter 11. Uh, so we're getting down there. We've got the schedule set for the rest of the gospel. So it'll go through next month. Um, yeah. Jane says there's crazy wind. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We'll just get it straight into the west side of our house. You kind of see the storm coming earlier today. Swept through. What they say? Like 40 mile an hour gusts. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. It seemed like it was crazy. Crazy windy. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you all had a good day. We'll uh, we'll go ahead and, and jump in here. So um, in case we have a, a new visitor, we're glad that you're with us tonight. I'm Trent Flutterjohn, my wife, Stephanie. And uh, we just get on here Sunday night through Thursday night, someone from our church at Faith Alliance. And uh, we read through a scripture. We talk about it. We ask what it says about God. Uh, we ask what it says about people. And then we talk about how it can be applied to our life. Um, and then who we could share it with. So let me go ahead and pray for us, and we'll get started talking about this text a little bit. We're uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Okay, let me pray. Father God, uh, thank you for this evening. Glad that we could get the, the technology working to be here and um, just gather together with a handful of people, Lord, as uh, we just look at Scripture. We pray that uh, you just help us have meaningful conversation and to discern uh, what is true and right and pleasing to you, God. So uh, be with Stephanie and I as we have conversation and, and just guide us through this time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We'll go ahead and read here. Uh, Mark 11, verses 1 through 11 is what we're reading. Stephanie will read it for us. <clears throat> now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and we'll send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David, Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. All right, so we'll do a little bit of summary here, summary of what was just read. So we're getting the, the point where Jesus enters into Jerusalem. So he tells his disciples, hey, you need to go up to the, the village up there and get a colt, get a little donkey, and bring it back. And if the people tell you, you know, what are you doing? They're not sure what's going on. Just say, hey, uh, Jesus sent me. So they went to this place where the colt was supposed to be. They asked what they were doing. They said, well, Jesus needs it. So they let it go right away. 
um, and they spread out their cloaks on the road. Uh, they put their jackets on the back of the donkey so Jesus could sit on it. And as he was entering in, people are shouting Hosanna. They're praising him uh, because he is this new king in the line of David. Uh, so Hosanna in the highest. And then Jesus enters Jerusalem with his disciples. Uh, he goes into the temple, very first thing. And then he looks around at everything, but they decide to leave because it was late. And they go out to Bethany, uh, him and his disciples. And first question that we have from this is, what does it teach us about God? What do we learn about God? And all, all of you are uh, you're welcome to contribute. Any thoughts that you have or questions you have about uh, this text tonight? What do you think, honey? I mean, I guess probably my initial take on it is that um, he has a powerful name. Because, you know, they just have to explain why, hey, we're taking this donkey. And just by using his name and saying, you know, the Lord. Mm -hmm. And his name is enough to, I'm sure a donkey wasn't cheap. Right. And if this total stranger came and took my donkey, I'd probably have a few more questions. Right, yeah, stealing his stuff. But right? that his reputation or that his name is so powerful, you know, that yeah. people accept it. Well, and, and you do wonder the, you know, there's not a lot of backstory there of, mm -hmm. of knowing like how all this developed or if this was truly like some miraculous thing where it's like they just surrender it because, you know, Jesus, yeah. and Jesus knew that God was going to compel them to do that or what. But, uh, you know, Jesus could foresee that. He told them exactly mm -hmm. the way it was going to play out. Like, yeah. When you get there, just tell them I need it and we'll be good to go. So I think that's something I see about God in the text is just his foreknowledge or understanding of, you know, what's going to be. Well, because it was a fulfillment of scripture, correct? In Isaiah. That, that he rode in, yeah. Yeah. On the back of a donkey. And it really is the, you know, the way a king would, you know, parade into the city or whatever when, when they're mm -hmm. being crowned king. Uh, so Julian says, God orchestrates everything. Good. So mm -hmm. it's just lined up right there. Right? It was amazing. Uh, Patty says, Jesus can work in people's hearts before there's a need. So good along the same lines there of, of God just knowing what's coming and providing for the needs. Isn't it interesting too, like when he goes in Jerusalem, where he goes is the temple, which yeah. is his house. Right. I mean, literally his house. Right. And you know, he ends up leaving, but what yeah. a what a weird moment for yeah. him, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one, because of from other texts, we know like what he saw there. Yeah, um, and how was, disappointed he was. Was not too pleased. Yeah. Um, so we reference in some other texts that, that talk about Jesus going in and flipping the tables and mm -hmm. being upset because they'd basically turned the temple into you know a, a place of sale where they're just selling stuff for, for, for uh, profit. So what else do we see about God here? anything i mean that he gives people like specific tasks mm -hmm. in verse one like he picks two of his 12 disciples and says you know you go take care of that so he's very clear about it mm -hmm. you know why those two in particular i don't know but mm -hmm. um so he does give us specific directives yeah that's good and encouraging yeah. How about um, people? What do we see about people? I think um, in like verse 9 and 10, I'm always kind of struck by like they're just full of joy and gladness, but I think probably the majority of them, like they didn't know what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew he was going to go and sacrifice himself, even though he kept giving them hints. And so I, I always see the people like they thought they knew what was going to happen, that he was going to come and then he was going to do this literal overthrow of Rome and bring the Jewish people back to where they were supposed to be. And there was mm -hmm. going to be a, you know, a battle and like that we as people, 
<laughs> unlike God, don't really see the big plan a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. They're pumped up for the immediate moment. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, our son came in here as a question. Uh, there's some in the girls' room, I think, on the ground. Um, so what I see about people would be um, maybe a little bit of what you were saying there, just there, like they're welcoming him for who they thought he was, you mm -hmm. know, this, this great king, and they're preparing to, to grow in power, but just how mistaken they were. Um, another one is just the small way, the things that we think might be small ways to serve God can mm -hmm. make a big, like that guy may or may not have known he had a huge role in fulfilling prophecy mm -hmm. of like all of scripture and god's design just by giving his donkey you know? yeah which like you said not that giving the donkey was a small thing but uh, um tim says people deep down we know we need a savior yeah. and i think that's like the whole like hosanna i mean they were excited it yeah. wasn't like they were rejecting him or like they genuinely were so excited and wanted him like they were accepting of him like please come or his hope and yeah so i think it i mean they didn't know what they were celebrating but it was still a genuine celebration right they knew they needed something yeah and he was a chance to be, yeah. to be that so that's good shows our need mm -hmm. need for um a leader in our life i think to it if i was the disciples that were sent i wouldn't want to do it but I think they you get the donkey. Yeah, because it would be so awkward. Like, yeah, hey man, uh, can I get your donkey? He's like, by the way, go in, get this donkey. If someone questions you, and you know that they're thinking, like, seriously, who wants us to steal a donkey? Right. And that they followed through with it, that it was the way that he said it would be, that they didn't have that moment of, oh, we don't want to do, you know, here's right. 10 bucks or, you know, whatever. They actually followed through and Jesus was true to what he said would happen. Really so if we as people follow his instructions, like he will provide or yeah. And like follow through with what he says. Yeah. That's good. I like that. I think there's truth in that. Yeah. And that, that took some boldness on their part. Oh right? man. Like they probably didn't know the guy. <laughs> Can you imagine walking There's up a big to some reason stranger's house? Pick me like, as a disciple. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, uh, let's make a better plan. <laughs> hey, you're a disciple now, honey. <laughs> I know. But it's true. Like sometimes we're led to do stuff that might be uncomfortable, right? Yeah. But it's probably in those places that God can show up the biggest sometimes. And how, how often do we rob him of an opportunity? Because we're like, uh, that's kind of awkward. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I mean, that whole situation was awkward. Yeah yeah and probably kind of scary mm -hmm. but i bet you it felt good after they went through with it and they saw the like you know how it played mm -hmm. out like i see the end of the story that's exactly what he said would happen yeah that's cool um okay so next we talk about um if this is really god's word which we believe it is how do we apply it to our life okay so some application points let me see for application. Anybody else willing to toss in here? You can as well. Application for this. I think that last one you said was pretty applicable. Yeah. Or really, verse, is it verse one still? Verse one is... Mm -hmm. uh, verse 2 go into the village in front of you and immediately as you enter you will find this colt tied up nobody's ever sat on it untie it and bring it like God gives us command to him and they did it mm -hmm. you know just uh, simple but yet complex and hard to get past maybe um, Rhonda says be quick to obey when God gives us direction I think that's good, uh, Rhonda. And when we stop, start thinking about it or processing it, it's probably when we start <laughs> being like, ah, maybe not. Maybe this one's not for me. Like, God, are you sure about this? But if, if we just act on that, we get to see God show up in some pretty cool ways. So that's cool. Thanks for sharing, Rhonda. Uh, Tim, like you said, be faithful. Get the donkey if told. Yeah. And so then, you know, that, that raises a, a question of, just spiritual discernment and how to unpack that, you know, like, um, 
these guys are standing there with Jesus. He, he says it to them physically, but now we're discerning God's lead through the Holy Spirit and in conversation with other people. And um, I think sometimes that, you know, that can be tough, but just the process of what is it that God's calling me to specifically? Um, and, and I think that comes with growth and maturity and uh, probably just, you know, a process of learning, mm. right? Anything? Yeah. You have any other application points? Um, I think maybe just like, I guess probably the crowd during the triumphal entry is always very interesting to me. I know we, we do like our reenactment every year. I mean, for my whole life, I have done Palm Sunday because I grew up in the church. So, you know, for, I was the one waving the palms. And now, you know, we watch our kids wave the palms and they're like, what is going on? <laughs> they're walking around. But like the actual triumphal entry, if you could just tap into that emotion of just excitement and awe mm -hmm. for the savior, mm -hmm. that would be very. How excited they were to receive him. Yeah. Like, just yeah. be a very cool thing. And I think sometimes we forget that. And I know like you preached about how it wasn't actually like he knew he was going towards his death. So it was like, they were celebrating something that, you know, like he was carrying right, a burden at that point. They didn't recognize the fullness of it. Yeah. So it's not really this like rah, 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 but it is. Right. It's kind well, of now, catch 22. And now spiritual, which was what I preached about Palm Sunday, but now we're like, we're still preparing to receive. Yeah. Him, right. So. Yeah. And it is with great joy, like the yeah. death, the death is done. And um, so when he comes again, mm -hmm. it, it really is just as Anna highest praise mm -hmm. over this person, Jesus and complete redemption. So yeah, that's a good application too. Well, and even just like, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even today, I don't know if this is like, but like we go out in the name of the Lord because he sent us out. Right. And just like we have that blessing on us too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Kind of sent out with him. Yeah. yeah. As his disciples. Because he, right? he completed it, which, you know, goes back. We did, did the DBS on whatever, where he was talking about, you will drink from my cup or whatever. Yeah. We were talking about how, like, Jesus had to do it first because right. only his blood could save. And then other people did drink of the cup and stuff. But they did it for lives. his glory. Right. So it's all just kind of like stacking yeah. Russian dolls. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it. Uh, Tim says, <laughs> maybe knowing what is coming, don't be looking for confirmation from the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably true. There's going to be a lot of times that uh, the world will stand against or people who don't understand uh, what you're doing spiritually um, but i think when you push through that stuff when we get to see some of the reward from it yeah and that's really what builds faith when we step yeah. through that and we see god show up it's like oh man like, yeah he's faithful <laughs> like he really is uh Rhonda says i missed an opportunity to bless someone this week because i rationalized thinking i didn't have time yeah mm -hmm. so and you're not alone there on i'm sure we all have experiences of that we think God prompts something and we sidestep it or come up with an excuse. And uh, yeah, we kind of, we get a, we miss out on getting to see what he could have done. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, last question is uh, who could we share this with? So that's just anybody in your life that you feel like, you know, could be encouraged by this. Um, you know, maybe it's just sharing the excitement that people had when they welcomed Jesus and how we could have that excitement as we prepare to, to welcome Jesus in our life. Um, also, uh, just the simple obedience to Jesus. They were told him to go get a donkey and they went. Uh, so maybe somebody needs that reminder, just, you know, simple obedience, just to seek after Jesus. Um, I think that's an easy one to pass along as well. So we just think of people we could share that with. But um, Let's see, we got a couple other thoughts here. Uh, Patty says, the hard part is when you follow his voice and follow through, and then you are rejected. It gives us a small taste of what he went through, right? And I, I think it's good to remember there, you know, it's still a seed planted. You know, it's 
it's not failure on our part if we're going forward in obedience like god still accomplishes something in that right he's whether it's shaping us or shaping the person we minister to or reached out to uh, maybe that did some good that we'll never see um, we did dbs with my daughter and her boyfriend today oh cool thanks for sharing Rhonda. that's good stuff it's simple and easy that's why we like to share it well, let us uh, pray for y'all, and we'll be done. You want to pray for us? I'll, I'll pray for us. Okay. Father God, uh, we just thank you for this evening. God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus and his willingness uh, to go into Jerusalem to offer his life uh, on our behalf. We thank you for the, the faith of the disciples that oftentimes gives us encouragement and challenges us. God, I pray that we'd be listening for your voice in our life and your direction in our life of uh, you know, those next steps that we need to take just to, um, to serve you and to get to know you and to love people who surround us, God. And I pray that we'd be willing uh, to step out in faith in those directions. And as we do, Lord, I pray that you would show up in big ways and just uh, continue to reveal yourself to us. Uh, God, we just say thank you again for all the mothers that you've provided in our, in our life. Um, and just pray a special blessing on, on the mothers of those uh, who are watching in tonight and uh, that you just care for us, Lord. Uh, we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. Good night.